I'm currently walking through the grounds of what used to be known as White Hills, where Mary Slack used to live, and of course where Michael de Kock used to pre-train many of his horses with his wife Diane. Mary Slack, of course, has been the sponsor of the Wilkebors Drift Triple Tiara, and it's really worked out in spades, and of course lives up to the old biblical expression, as he gives, so too shall he receive. That certainly was the case on the 1st of April, when Mary was victorious with a beautiful little filly called Orchid Island in the second leg of the Triple Tiara known as the Phillies Classic. But many people in their right mind would not possibly have imagined that Sean Terry, the champion trainer of South Africa, would have been victorious in all six races leading up to the second leg of the Classic, including the HF Oppenheimer Horse Chestnut Stakes with the Horse of the Year Legal Eagle. So before we go any further, let's catch up with Sean Terry and find out what he really thought prior to the running of the first race on Saturday the 1st of April at Turfentain Racecourse. Of course it was Wilkebors Drift, Phillies Classic Day. Well, going into the meeting we were probably hoping for a winner or two with all the things that were, um, we weren't really happy with going into the meeting. Um, obviously we were um, pretty focused on Legal Eagle because he was a question mark whether I was going to run him or not. And um, the results obviously went so well before that race that I said, shucks, I hope. I hope it's not going to be a miss where, when he runs. And um, I, I don't normally feel pressure um, on these days, but I felt pressure. I, I thought that things weren't quite as they should be. And Legal Eagle, you know, you don't really want to be going into a race meeting with a horse like that with question marks. So, uh, you know, he was obviously expected to win. And, uh, you know, I was petrified that he would that he would fluff his lines. So, you know, you didn't really realise, um, you know, how the day was going. I mean, one, then the next one, then the next one. But obviously once he won, then obviously we, there was huge relief and uh, obviously enjoyed the moment from there. And uh, away they go. Mac DeLago was slow into stride, losing three to four lengths. Legal Eagle has got right over to lead early. So Legal Eagle goes from the widest draw to lead from New Predator. Farik races up there too. Fort Embers on their outside. Rafif only three lengths off the leader. 1,100 metres left to go, and it's Legal Eagle by one length from Farik in second. Fort Ember, she's run up into third, and on the inside of those, New Predator. Then comes Rafif giving Legal Eagle about four lengths start, two lengths away to Romney Prince. French Navy second to last, and Mac Delago is the trailer as they turn for home. In the horse chestnut stakes, 700 metres to go, and Legal Eagle out there by two lengths. New Predator racing away in second. Fort Ember is on the outside. Then comes Rafif in behind those, followed by Romney Prince. 420 to go, and Legal Eagle goes strongly by two lengths. New Predator. Uh, Rafif comes out after them and then Romany Prince but with 280 to go it's still Legal Eagle clear French Navy's running on with New Predator but Legal Eagle is in a class of his own Legal Eagle his sixth group one win six winners for Sean Terry and Legal Eagle has landed safely by two French Navy second third placing New Predator then Rafif Fortember Romany Prince Kangaroo Jack Magdalaga and Ferrari it's very hard to single out his most impressive win of all time. But, I mean, this was eye-popping. No, unbelievable win. It was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the last thing I wanted to do was go to the front. And, um, you know, everything just went so smoothly. And, um, you know, there was never an anxious moment. And it was really, really um, a professional display. So Anton Marcus is not joking when he says it's an absolute honour to ride a horse of this incredible ability. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we're all in awe of the horse and we all really um, uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to have been blessed to work with an athlete like this, and it is a privilege. It's just a privilege to ride a horse like this. Just a big thank you to the boss, you know, and Sean and Derek, and uh, yeah, I, I just want to try and cherish this, you know. Uh, horses like this don't come along every day, and uh, I'm just, I'm really elated. Uh.
Rumbling Brook broke the line first. Maleficent, my friend, Lee is wider out. El Hora shows pace in the early part. Bipod is only three lengths off the leader. Filet races behind that being fabulous. Yes, smiling blue eyes. Six to seven lengths off the leader. Safe Harbour is on her outside. Then comes Orchid Island and Oriental Oak, followed by Belrose, second to last, and Captain Gambler is the trailer. Maleficent leads by two lengths. My Friend Lee is in second. Then comes Babbling Brook down the inside. Filet behind that. Further back to El Hora. On the outside is Bipod, My Friend Lee, Safe Harbour, and Orchid Island are coming home strongly. Smiling Blue Eyes has still got five lengths to go. With 400 metres to run, Orchid Island, Bipod. They hit the front. El Hora is down the inside. Safe Harbour. Running on from the rear is Bell Rose. Anyone's call with 200 metres to go. It's Bipot in front. On the outside, Orchid Island. Also Safe Harbour. Oriental Oak is running on. Bell Rose on the outside. In front is Orchid Island. Orchid Island. Bipot down the inside. Orchid Island has beaten Safe Harbour. Bipot, Oriental Oak, Bell Rose and Alhora. The first six or seven only separated by one length. It's gone to Orchid Island for Mike Decock. start. Crowd pleaser began well. Aladell is up on the outside. Janubi's also in a handy spot early on. Unagi's on the rail. El Sahem is back in fifth. Four lengths off the leader. A length behind that is Furiosa. Then Campala Campari. Heavenly Blue and Tilbury four to the two back markers. They give them about eight lengths start now. In the second leg of the South African Triple Crown, 600 to go. Aladell in front. Janubi. Unagi moves up down the inside. Heavenly Blue is travelling well right on the left. El Sahem is also coming forward strongly then Furiosa. 400 metres to go. Unagi's in front. Heavenly Blue becomes the danger. El Sahem runs on strongly. Furiosa's on their outside. It's down the inside. Heavenly Blue strikes the front in the classic. Unagi. Then El Sahem and Furiosa. But with 150 to go. It's Heavenly Blue. It's two to three lengths fair of El Sahem. And it's going to provide Mike de Kock with a classic double interpretate. Heavenly Blue has won the SA Classic 3 lengths. El Sahem Furiosa. Then came a cracking run in Argy, Janubi further back, Kampala Kampari, Aladell, crowd pleaser and Tilbury Fort, what a run!
know this is a moment I've dreamed of since I started race riding and I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. Um, it's just really been a dream of mine since I started and it's, it's, I must just say a huge thanks to Matt DeCock, Mr. DeCock, um, the whole team back at home, even Johnny Gerudis, you know, they, they guide me, they help me wherever they can and they give me the support and you know it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for me to get, be getting such great support and I'm so grateful and honoured to, to be to be getting it and it's just a huge thanks to them for giving me the opportunities. Thanks to you, but you know what it's like, you can't, it can't be done without a team, my parents, the grooms, everybody, you know, very professional people <clears throat> and just thanks to all the owners for the support to me because when my dad's away it's hard to, to carry on supporting us. Well his guidance is there and yourself and your mum die with the team, you certainly, you know, producing the goods and a, a classic double for you, unfortunately you could not do the interview for the previous race but that was a fluent win from Orchid Island as well. Yeah, thanks, TZ. I apologize for that, but you know, I had to get the job done here as well. Um, so a big thanks to Mary for all her support, and you know, that's a really gutsy filly, and I'm, she's very valuable now, and I'm glad that we've got the group one under the belt, and um, you know, she'll go on to the Oaks next. Um, but I, like I said, I'm just really grateful to Mary and Volkhovo Shift. For these horses to win big races, you need them spot on on the day. You had a plan. You mentioned it during the course of the week, and you were spot on with the way things worked out. Thanks, DJ. Yeah, listen, this horse in his last run was definitely not close to 100%, and we knew was, this was his main mission, and um, the owners were willing to sacrifice that as well. So, so a big thanks to them. Um, this horse is just going to get better as he goes further. Everything went his way. We had full confidence in Kaylin. As, as, you know, many people don't. He's such a young, young, up-and-coming up -coming jockey, but well done to him. You know, he's really got a cool head. Yeah, what can I say? You know, this is, this is the true horse. You know, we've been saying from the beginning that he's a top horse, and I think today everybody will now believe us. Well, many out there will be saying uh, the next leg, uh, that's his mission now uh, for the high felt uh, season. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be his next, uh, next mission if he comes out of this race well, which I, which I hopefully he will do. Just a big thanks to Mr. Nestat, Arun, Wendy for being here, Warren is not here, to my dad. You know, um, the story coming through from Australia last year was that he loved one horse and one horse only. And he really does have a masterful eye and he is the master, so well done to him.